Okay, we're going to head now to uh, speak to Jonathan Davis, who's an economist. Uh, he's been on the show before a few times. And uh, regular on BBC, regular on uh, much of the media in the UK. And I'm delighted to have him on the line with us this afternoon. Let me just say goodbye to that. And hello to Jonathan. Good afternoon, Jonathan. Uh, good afternoon, David. How are you? I've heard that you're on your holidays. Is that right? <laughs> We're on our travels. Uh, we, we live in the south of England, and uh, we stayed overnight with friends uh, just north of Manchester, and um, we're headed up to Scotland. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, the Fatherland. Yeah. We were there for a couple of weeks. Fantastic. Well, we don't, I don't want to hold you up yeah. too much, but uh, <laughs> well, uh, we just want to uh, get your opinion on what's happening at the moment in the news. Again, the economy is very much uh, at the forefront, uh, even though the Olympics are on, and. Uh, we are just hearing last week that the ECB was saying they will not let the euro fail and the markets rallied because of that. And uh, are they still rallying now because of that? Is that still uh, brought confidence to the market? Um, it, it certainly brought some uh, temporary confidence to market participants. But, you know, um, the, the politicians, the European Central Bank, the Federal Reserve, they, they've been doing this for the past few years. They've been instilling confidence in the markets. It's, it's as if the stock market must never fall. Mm. Well, you know, that's funny because the, you're in Spain. The Spanish market is back down to 2003 levels. So, you know, it, 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 they're obviously not that bothered about some markets, but uh, the, the US market, the British market, yeah. the DAX in Germany, they're, they're at, uh, somewhat at highs. Um, however, it's very fragile, and the point is they've, they've instilled this confidence time after time after time in the last few years. It doesn't actually stop the reality that there is ultimately nothing they can do because the reality is very simple, and your listeners just need to understand this there's too much debt yeah uh now we've we've heard and we've heard the old age old argument about uh, austerity versus versus uh, growth and uh, bringing in infrastructure and so on uh, we'll get on to that but we've heard this week uh, the am i right in saying that the americans are pushing for the ecb to buy up government bonds uh, i should imagine germany aren't yeah. too interested in that is that right yeah well, there's a number of issues there. Um, first of all, let's consider the Germans. Um, uh, over 50% of uh, Germans now want to be out of the euro. Wow. And that is a truly fantastic statistic mm. because Germany and France created the euro. Yeah. And then you look at another poll, more than 60% of Germans want Greece out of the euro. So there's clearly a political movement in Germany which is now anti the status quo. Now going back on your your main um, uh, um, uh, uh, consideration about the Americans wanting X, Y and Z, what the Americans want is for Obama to win the next yes. election which of course is going to be in November. So, you know, all of these politicians, whether it's Merkel or a couple of months ago Sarkozy or Cameron or, or uh, the, the Greeks in the status quo or the Spaniards in the status quo all they want is to get re-elected. That's all they care about. Um, the reality is um, there's little they can do. Um, they may win well get re-elected and certainly we've seen some people get re-elected but we've seen others such as Sarkozy not get re-elected we've seen um, a close call in Greece it's and really, other countries yeah. um, and, and you know you, you, you're talking about the Americans want um, the, uh, euro bonds, the Americans want the ECB to print money well you know the, the, all these politicians want more money printing but uh, it's a question as to whether or not it's actually going to happen. Because what I mean by that is um, the, uh, the German Supreme Court has to first 
uh, uh, consider and confirm whether or not Germany is a, uh, is actually going to allow um, uh, all, all that to happen. And the, the Supreme Court isn't actually going to announce until September the 12th. Mm. And, and indeed, I noticed that a senior politician in Germany just a couple of days ago, uh, not uh, uh, flippantly, but seriously, was saying they ought to sue uh, Mario Draghi, uh, the, the uh, head of the European Central Bank, for making statements last week that he will do whatever he can okay. to uh, uh, prop up the euro. Well, the reality is that he, he, it's... In effect, he has authority to do that because the ECB needs Germany. Germany's the only country that has any money. And until the Supreme Court announces, nothing can happen. Yeah, and uh, maybe back to what we were just talking about, the Americans, obviously, uh, it's so intrinsically linked that the Eurozone crisis is affecting, what well, they believe affecting the economy in yeah. America, although that's not the only thing that's affecting the economy in America, is it, at all? No, of course. We, for, we have a global economy. Uh, practically every country's economy is linked in with every other country's economy. Uh, 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 and so if Europe is in depression, which it most obviously is, unfortunately, but, you know, that is the result of three, four, five decades of a debt explosion, and now we're at the other side. We're now in debt contraction. So, you know, austerity actually is just a, a euphemism for debt contraction. Uh, America has huge difficulties because America, just like every other country, has had a debt explosion. They are now spending uh, $1.6 trillion, that's $1,600 billion more than they're taking in every year. Now, obviously, every householder knows that that is unsustainable. Mm. You cannot, year after year, spend more than you're taking in. Eventually, the lenders will stop lending. You know, in America, um, you know, they, they talk about they've got 1.5% growth, which, incidentally, is down from 2.5%, 3% just a few months ago. Uh, actually, I believe that America is in recession as we speak, but uh, their statisticians don't actually report it yeah. until about a year after the fact. But look at one simple fact in America, and your listeners will be aghast at this. 308 million Americans, 47 million on food stamps. <laughs> it's the 1930s all over again. Yeah. Uh, I mean... We have talked about this before, uh, and I've spoken to you about this before, and many other economists as well, about the fact that we somehow need to get money flowing around the economy uh, in, in Spain here. Uh, you know, and austerity measures obviously are, are counterproduct counterproductive with that. But you also see the flip side where you're saying, yes, but there's, there's such a big deficit that we need to get the deficit lower. And we just had a Spanish uh, politician coming out this week from the government, uh, even today, saying that Spain's on target to reach its uh, deficit uh, target. So this, for this yeah. yeah, which I yeah. find amazing. Yeah, yeah. They, they these are, these are the Spanish politicians who said that Spain does not need a bailout. And they said it might be 20 billion euros. And then they said it was 40 billion euros. They actually got a bailout of 100 billion euros. And everyone knows they actually need another three or 400 billion euros to bail out those failed banks in Spain. And that's one, just one European country, not the whole of Europe. Do not believe a word that these senior politicians are saying. They are purely out for themselves. It's purely about getting re-elected, keeping the status quo. Um, you, having uh, said that, Europe, Jonathan, uh, sorry. Uh, so, uh, so, sorry, having said that, you said that they're purely about getting re-elected, but as we've said already, uh, if they keep the status quo, the chances are they probably won't get re-elected either, because it, it just seems to me, even now, there's a... It, you know, when Partido Popular came in Spain, the Conservative government here, uh, last, about nine months ago, um, normally you expect a honeymoon period. There was no honeymoon period here in Spain, and... Uh, quickly the tide turn is turning against the Partido Popular in a very quick way and it makes you wonder whether they'll ever get re-elected again in the next 10 years. 
Uh, and the reason why that happened is because Spain has such economic depression, 25% unemployment, 50% unemployment if you're under the age of yeah. 25. Um, in other words, it's already beyond extremes of economic and financial difficulty. And yet, this, the, the, the mainstream political parties still want the status quo. They still want more debt, uh, stay in the euro, and so on and so on. Uh, goodness knows why, because none of their initiatives have succeeded. They have failed time after time. I remind you, the reason why Spain is in such a depression is because for 20 years, Spain had a significant debt rise until the last 10 years, until a couple of years ago, it was a true debt explosion. You are now on the other side of that. You're in debt contraction. You're in an era of deleveraging. You've already, you're already part way through a housing crash. There's some afraid to say a lot more of that to come. And until you have major structural reforms, yeah. um, such as uh, in your pensions, uh, in your public sector, uh, in your employment laws, you're not going to have the efficiencies that other countries have, which make them more competitive. And yet the politicians don't want to change any of that. They just want more money from Germany to bail, them, to bail the banks out and keep the status quo. It doesn't work. Well, where we started with the uh, Americans pushing for uh, uh, the ECB to, to buy up basically government debt, uh, what effect, if any, would that have? Because we've already seen that happen to a degree, um, but it was only over a staged period of time. Uh, what, what effect, what, or any effect, would it have on, on the market confidence yeah. uh, and, and so on? Yeah. Well, well, first of all, I want to say um, it, 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 it's crazy to believe that if the stock market is rising, then that means the economy must be improving. Um, I remind you mm. that the stock market was on a massive high towards the end of 2007. And what happened in 2008? We had the biggest economic collapse, literally, in history. However, there's no doubt um, if there was a move for the European Central Bank to buy up sovereign bonds, uh, sovereign debt, uh, government debt, and indeed, or indeed just hand it to banks, absolutely no question, the stock market would soar. It would have another 20 or 30 percent rally within a few months. Mm. Um, however, um, I, I would say, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, I be, the ECB has to make an announcement this week. Um, I don't think um, uh, they've got much to say. Uh, the Federal Reserve, uh, they also uh, make an announcement on Wednesday. So one or other of them has to say we're going to print a lot of money in order for the stock markets to stay at these levels. Um, I doubt... I, I, I cannot possibly say what's going to happen, but I doubt that either of them is going to confirm there's going to be money printing at this time. I think they're going to have to need a justification for it. In other words, I think we're going to have to see a, a 15 to 30 percent fall in the stock market before they can tell the public, oh, we need to do something, we need to print some money, the public will buy it as ever, and then the stock market will rise. But as I say, that's after, say, a 25% fall. However, by the end of this week, we will know what's going to happen. Mm. It just appears to me, and I know you probably feel the same on this, Jonathan, uh, that is that you know, the politicians are doing bits and bobs here and there, but nothing on a major grand scale. And, and like, like you were saying earlier on, uh, it, it just wonders what what's going through their head when it when they are they expecting it just to suddenly turn around on its own. I, I just it amazes me when yes. no major reforms. What, I mean, what, you've had a few labour reforms here in Spain, but there's nothing on a, a major grand scale that's really shook up exactly. the, the whole country. Exactly, because it's politically untenable 
uh, to have major reform. You know, it's no wonder the under 25s, one in two of them in Spain, and indeed in Greece, are unemployed. Mm. Because employers know that if they take someone on and they're totally incompetent and or lazy, they can't get rid of them. So why employ them in the first place? Jonathan, and yet, as got, you say... Sorry, we've got a call, Jonathan. Are you OK to take a call? Sure, by all means. Yeah. Good afternoon, caller. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Um, James Chapman here. Hi. Just thought I'd... Mean, I don't know whether you know it or not, but I'm, I'm sure you probably do, but the Sheikh uh, uh, Al Thani of Qatar, as you know, has made a huge investment in the Costa del Sol. Yeah. It plans to build a port at Marbella and all the infrastructure and what have you. And he's also brought Malaga Football Club mm. and he's going to, he wanted to build a new stadium and so on and so forth. And the investment was between 300 million and 500 million euros. Right. But because of the bureaucracy and arguments by uh, Seville government, the Hunter de Andalusia, yeah. it looks like he's going to walk away from the lot. <laughs> That, that, that's worrying, so got, isn't it? You've got someone that's prepared to make a massive investment, give a load of work for people, just constructing the stadiums and the port is work, and then the work of a seven-star hotel, everything has been thrown back at him with one excuse after the other, and we are now on the edge of him saying, stuff you lot, I'm coming. We should be laying out the red carpet for him saying, come on, whatever you need to be done needs to be done, let's get it done. But uh, I, can't, I can't understand why Marbella didn't uh, appoint someone to deal with this man's everything he wants for the port. I, and I mm. can't understand why people have... I mean, to, to build the stadium, they said that you can't build the stadium because you can't have it bigger than the sanchez Pins one in Seville because Seville's the capital and you can't build one bigger than ours. Yeah. And then they said... You can't build it there because it's going to, it's in line with the new runway at Malaga. Well, the person that made that decision must be nuts and never gone to Malaga because the flat the Mayor is in direct line with the existing runway. Mm. So it's, it's, it's just excuses, excuses, excuses for one reason or another. And now the goose that was laying the golden egg, someone that's investing his money is about to walk. Yeah, it, it's frightening. It really is, and uh, I've seen it seen it happen in the I UK as well. It. Yeah, I can't. I can't believe. I can't believe that they could be so stupid. Mm. Thank you for your call. It's a very valid point and uh, a worrying one as well. Uh, but thanks for your call. Thank you. Bye bye. Cheers. Thanks. Thanks for listening. Uh, what What do you make of that? I mean, obviously you you don't know the ins and outs and the the details of that, but uh, that that's happening a lot uh, at the moment all over Europe. I'm sure. Well. It's not just in Europe. It's it's any country, basically. Um, I, I find it amazing um, how um, so few people uh, are able to control so many people. Um, you know, we talk about... We also talk about free markets. And, and, and free markets, uh, uh, may I say, are the solution. But we haven't had free markets for decades. You know, every time they print this money and bail out some more millionaire and billionaire bankers, what they're actually doing it, 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 by creating more currency is it devalues the currency mm. and therefore makes imports more expensive. Therefore, the cost of living for every normal man, woman and child in the street rises. The cost of living rises. The cost of running businesses rise uh, and yet the elite or should I say the clique at the top they do very well out of it whether it's the bankers the politicians the international business people and so on um, and yet um, Jonathan, we, we, got... we allow them to do this year after year we've got another caller on the line good afternoon caller hi good afternoon I was listening with interest just now at um what the gentleman said Jonathan, about uh, yes. Middle East businessmen putting oh, money yes, into yeah. the Malaga area. There's an easy reason why those people are going to walk away. It's what is the big problem in Spain. Mm. Um, lack of business acumen, corruption, and self-interest. We only have to yep. look at what happened with the airports outside Valencia and outside Madrid, you know. Um, they just don't have it. 
And the sooner they realise this, and the sooner someone gets a grip of the corruption situation and the lack of business acumen, there are not many of them who have that, the better off Spain's going to be. But until that goes on, you know, we're just going to see one thing after another after another happen in Spain until the whole lot is just going to fall to pieces like a house of cards. Would you say that you, you see more business acumen in the UK? We're hearing uh, of the likes of BMW investing uh, more in the UK and even uh, Opel Vauxhall as well, uh, different car manufacturers like that. Uh, are, are the UK more attuned to, uh, to growth than Spain, would you say? I think they are, um, but you see, when you talk about business acumen and corruption, the two go hand in, they go hand in glove, really, mm. uh, because the two are allied very closely to each other. And I think in the United Kingdom, we do have corruption in the United Kingdom. It's crept in over the last, let's say, decade. Um, probably it's not so much as it, was, as it is now as it was before, but I think we have got some which needs to be stamped out. But in Spain, it is absolutely full of it. Um, Self-interest, mm. as I say, business acumen and, and corruption. Those are the three main points. If they could get over it and get decent businessmen working in Spain, and there are some, but there's not enough. Yeah. I think they can start overcoming the problem, but as it stands at the moment, you know, and listen to the gentleman you're talking to uh, in UK, the whole lot is just an absolute box of frogs. Mm. Thank you for your call. What's your name? Peter. Peter, thanks for your call, Peter. I appreciate that point. Thank you. Okay, Maddie. Cheers, um, bye-bye. Uh, anything to add to that? David, David, yes. David un until we get capitalism um, in economies, we will never get over uh, nepotism, favouritism, cronyism, uh, or indeed, um, we are likely in some European countries to lose democracies. I, I remind your listeners that the likes of uh, uh, Spain and Portugal were, were, were only came into uh, uh, democracy about four decades ago. Yes. And I'll tell you, the way things are now, um, I, I think it's likely, unfortunately, that the army will send the tanks in as the riots get more and more intense. And, you know... Greece, Spain, Portugal, Italy even, for goodness sake, could well lose the democracy within the next five years. And 25% unemployment is exactly the kind of situation that creates that. So yeah, you get, a, you get a hit, a Hitler is, coming in, don't you? You can have a Hitler coming in at that point, which was seen in history. Well, that, that, that's exactly my point, but it doesn't even have to be a Hitler. Um, it can be someone who uh, is on the side of the worker, you know, the, the big trade unionist. But, you know, socialism and fascism, um, ultimately they're two sides of the same coin. What it ultimately means is the people lose their freedoms and their liberties and the cliques get more and more power. Um, and the, the people need to um, rise up democratically and they need to be listened to. You know, the rioters in Madrid, I'm not suggesting for one moment it's a, a good thing to riot, but the people need to be listened to. The yeah. politicians are not listening. They're coming up with the same answers time and time again, which is... Let us borrow even more money. Let us kick the can down the line further. Well, do you know what? Four years after the crash, we are four years down the line. Yeah. There's only so far you can go. Jonathan, I, I wonder if it happened in Northern Europe, I'm talking about Britain and other places, even Germany, whether the, the riots would have been more intense. Because you, you look at Spain and they're very, in some respects, a laid-back uh, nation of people and in, in Italy possibly as well but uh, I just wonder whether uh, at some point it's just going to break and uh, you know we've seen it happen in Barcelona and Madrid already even to some scale here down here on the south coast of Spain uh, but it makes you wonder how much more the Spanish people and those who are expats here will take of uh, tax rises and cost of living going up and uh, unfortunately uh, that, that will just cont continue until a breaking point. I, I don't know what the breaking point will be or if, he, if ever we'll even get there. What I know is that until the politicians and central bankers fundamentally change their policies, um, the people will find themselves in economic depression for what will appear forever. Japan 
in the 1980s was becoming the most powerful economy on in the planet. 23 years later, after 1989, it's still in depression. Mm. And we are taking the same actions as they've been doing for nearly two and a half decades. We're printing money, we're handing it to bankers, um, we're uh, building, as they say, bridges to nowhere. It doesn't work. What we need to do is let the banks go down. We need to let them fail. We need to reduce our debts as a society, as an economy. We need to liberalize our employment and we need to let the entrepreneurs flourish because whilst you support the big international businesses and financial operations, what you don't allow is the entrepreneurs to flourish and study after study after study shows that uh, employment creation and wealth creation come from small businesses, not from large ones. Jonathan. Those are the ones that are going back. That's why we've got higher and higher unemployment. We've got a, a final caller on the line. Good afternoon, Sharon. Hello. Oh, no. Go on. Oh, she's uh, got some problems with her phone. She may call back. Jonathan, uh, it's fascinating what you've been talking about again, as always. Uh, Sharon's ringing back now. Let me just uh, take her call because it'd be interesting. Good afternoon, Sharon. Hi. Can you hear me, Sharon? Yes, I can yeah. now. Yeah, yes. go, yeah go on, Sharon. Hello, can yeah. you, yes, I'm fine. Yes. Um, I think we've got a fair amount of corruption with the banking system in the UK. All these people ringing in so many of corruption in Spain. It's, 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 it, the, the banking system that causes this problem is, is terrible in England. And I don't think we've got great democracy in England either because uh, both the major political parties are tied up with the bankers. A question for Jonathan. Jonathan, how fair do you think it is as Cameron to blame the Eurozone for the UK's problems? <laughs> um, it, it's a total red herring. Um, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the left and the right in whatever country it is, the, the, just like I was saying earlier, they're two sides of the same coin. Um, they, they pretend, you know, the likes of Ed Balls and Osborne or Khan, they pretend there's a grand canyon between them. Actually, it's a way for thin crack because the reality is on the big issues, they want the same. They want to continue borrowing and spending. They want to continue bailing out the bankers. Uh, and they want to continue to stay in the, in the EU. And they, for example, they also don't want a referendum in the EU and things like that. So the big picture, they all want the same things. So when Catman says the, uh, Britain's going down because of the EU, well, in a sense it's true, but it's caught before the horse because Britain along with Japan, is the most indebted nation on the planet. Thank you. you know, we right, have a lot of debt. Right. Sharon, thank Sharon thanks for your can call. Just, can yeah, yeah, carry, carry on, Jonathan, yeah. Sharon's gone, but carry in on, Jonathan. UK, yeah. we have, in the UK, we have debt of nine times the size of the economy. Every householder will know if you've got, say, £50,000 of income and £450,000 of debt, and you're increasing that debt by £50,000 a year, you're going bankrupt. Yeah. It's as simple as that. But the UK one, is bankrupt. We cannot possibly grow with that backdrop. One more call. One more call. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm just wondering, um, is Jonathan, can he confirm that he's a UK party member? Say, say that again. I'm sorry, what was the question? Can you confirm that you are a UKIP, United Kingdom Independence Party, uh, member? Can I confirm that I'm a UKIP member? Is that what you're asking? David, what's the question? Uh, he's, uh, d he's asking, are you a member of UKIP? No, I'm not a member of any political party. What a strange question. Okay. <laughs> well, it's just that many of the things you're saying are almost carbon copy, what uh, Nigel Farage says. Uh, I've watched with amusement some of his speeches, and some of your references are literally lifted lock, stock and barrel from some of his speeches. Uh, well, that's well that's why, uh, maybe he's quoting me. <laughs> well, well may maybe, sir, maybe he's quoting me. Um, well, I would doubt that. The, uh, the other references you made to um, perhaps a dictator coming back to Spain, that is absolutely ridiculous. Um, let me tell you first that I'm a Spanish national. 
And the last thing that the Spanish people will want after suffering 40 years of a dictatorship, which is still fairly recent in our minds, is the thought of returning to another one. I was actually sat in a bar with some Spanish colleagues of mine who work for the National Press here in Spain, and it was two years ago, last July, we were reading an article which was very similar to what you said that was printed in the Daily Mail, and they were absolutely outraged at the suggestion then that, uh, that, that at the story that was printed in the Daily Mail, which again sounded very similar to, to what your comments, uh, suggesting that Spain might resort to a uh, dictatorship. The, the idea is, is so ridiculous, it's almost beyond words. OK, Dave... And, you... I, and I tell you that as a Spanish national. Uh, Dave, thanks for you. We're going to have to go because I've got to get some commercial breaks. Uh, but okay, Dave, no thanks problem. for... Thank you for letting me make my comment. OK, Bye. thank you, Dave. Uh, do you want to respond to that, Jonathan, before we go? Um, uh, j just that um, a anyone who believes that with 25% uh, unemployment that that's not right for extremist politicians to come forward is being hugely naive. Mm. Okay, Jonathan, if anybody wants to get any more information on what you're doing and uh, get in touch with you, how can they do that? Um, they, they could uh, look on jonathandaviswm.com and if they send us an email through that, we'll um, uh, send them newsletters and updates of the, co of the economy and markets. Fantastic. Jonathan, we'll be in touch again. Now, you go and have a nice holiday and have a chill-out time. <laughs> Thank you. Don't you worry about the economy. <laughs> we'll, look so after it. We'll, we'll look after it in the meantime while you're away. It'll still be all here for you to come back to. Well, that's very good of you. Thanks very much. <laughs> but don't worry. Nothing will be solved until you come back, OK? <laughs> OK, then. Cheers. Cheers, Jonathan. Bye. Uh, thank you. Bye-bye.